guys will call each other faggots if like they seem like not masculine enough. They say that looks gay or that's gay. Oh, they just call them fags or dykes or lesbians. Fag. What a sissy, that's so gay. That cocksucker and fudge packer. Faggot or maricon or um, marimacha. If, if a girl was like not feminine enough, they were just to say like, oh, that girl's a dyke or that girl's like a man. She always tried to be a man and stuff. Why do they care how I live my life? That's, that's my life, that's not their life. I, I think, or at least I like to say, that I've known that I was gay since like, like about second grade or so is like when I like pinpoint it because like when you're that young I don't really think you know about gay or straight or that you can be with men in that capacity even but I knew that I kind of felt an affinity I guess towards guys. I think at the at that time I was because I was in fifth grade sixth grade I didn't think much about it but I mean that's basically where I was learning learning about gay and lesbians. I mean, it was not, even though it wasn't true or it's not, um, gay is not a bad thing, but that's where I was learning what gay was, even whether it was right or wrong. I do remember being aware of it once I got to school because even in elementary school, when I was in fourth grade, I remember kids always saying, oh, that's so gay. Anything that was bad was gay. And for me, I, I soon realized that it was bad to be gay, and I thought, but that's what my mom is. And so very, I learned very early on about homophobia, and that it was those kinds of events, kids always saying um, pejorative, gay, denigrating gay people, um, that made me not tell other kids about my mom being a lesbian. And I would say that I lived in the closet in the sense that I didn't tell my friends, I didn't tell my teachers, I didn't want to tell anybody about the fact that my mom was a lesbian because I saw how they thought of gay people. And so I didn't say anything. Sometimes when I go to school, my friends, like my, one of my friends, he tells me why do I hang out a lot with my friends, but they're girls. So, he tells me, why do you hang out a lot with the girls? And that looks gay. And I, I don't answer him like, so I don't care. And sometimes if you're like hugging your friend or just like not laying on them, but like your elbow or anything like that, they, they say that looks gay or that's gay or stuff like that. And if they say that, I just ignore them. But sometimes I feel sad because my sister's gay. And I feel like if they're making fun of her, but some of them don't know that my sister's gay, only my best friends. When I was a freshman, I used to take PE class, and every every day I go to class. I actually failed that class just because I didn't get to dress to PE, just because of the fact that I'm scared to go in the locker room, the same locker room that I have to go every single day and face all those bastards to call me names that I don't deserve. It's like. Why bother going to a class where you get hurt, you know? That's why it's like not cool and that's why I failed that class. And it's not about failing the class, it's just the way they treat you, I mean. You know, I was chosen to be on the football team and um, it was a great experience, you know, it's something that I wanted to do. Like, I, I really, ever since I was younger, I really liked sports. Our rival school, um, found out that I was out, and they um, took it upon themselves to vandalize our school with like, you know, homophobic remarks on the football lockers. And that brought it to the attention to, to the administration. They sat me down and they told me that um, for my own protection, they would like for me to quit the team. The teacher that ran the locker room, he would like say fags and stuff like, get out fags and get out of the locker room. Like he would try to get because he was like a PE teacher too, so he would try to get all the boys out of the locker room and then he'd just like say some homophobic comments like fags or stop being gay and stuff and then just try to like make them go out by using like homophobic language. It wasn't so much like the physical and verbal stuff because I knew those people were practically, were like pretty, pretty stupid like for just like discriminating against me just because I'm gay. But then just having all my friends kind of stop talking to me and like give me weird looks like you're a freak looking. 
air freak looks and then like just like people asking me like are you gay and then they ask it in like this weird condescending tone so yeah that was like really traumatic like I tried to like I was thinking about it and then I sort of tried to commit suicide like once during that time ninth grade was my worst grade ever ninth and eighth grade after like when I got to ninth grade I'm like whoa I'm gay the, once like in um we were in class and our teacher like he's like oh we're not like well he was making a comment on gay people and he pointed at me and my friend like oh we're not like them you know they're they can get married and this and that and I got so red because everybody was like staring at us. I think once I came out that week was really rough I had death threats in my locker room um, Having PE with the girls was really difficult because they decided, they're like, oh, you know, we don't want you to look at us, you're going to do something to us, and all this stuff that really didn't make sense when some of them I had known since I was in fifth or sixth grade. If there's, you know, torturing, as I guess you can name it, um, with name calling and having death threats and worrying about where can I hide today so people won't bother me, um, where can I sit today so my teacher won't harass me or put me on the spot about certain things. I think sometimes teachers don't understand all the pressures that are going on in a person's mind and dealing with all these pressures sometimes one is not thinking about other options, one is thinking very narrowly and for me personally I think I was thinking very narrowly myself and thinking of you know screw the world, screw my teachers, screw my grades, screw everything and the best option is just suicide which I know now and I knew at the time after getting help that it's not an option. I mean there's certain people that I knew um, that I was fortunate to meet that if they wouldn't have commented and said like one of my summer school teachers I never forgot her she you know she said you know life is worth living and I think she read this through my paperwork and just told me you know here's a couple of books that you can read I mean she was kind of I guess outreaching to me and I think if I wouldn't got if I wouldn't have gotten these small little steps or teachers intervening intervening after after going through the third high school I I don't know maybe I would have been more depressed at school maybe I wouldn't have felt like going to school, maybe I wouldn't have felt um, that self-worth. My Spanish teacher was teaching us about Frida Kahlo, and um, then her she started talking about her bisexuality because in the, in the video she showed us, um, they were talking about her bisexuality, so she brought it up too after the video, and she was just, she made a comment saying that she didn't like bisexuality and that it's the wrong thing to do. And it just felt weird because at the time I did identify as a lesbian and I just felt like, I didn't like the teacher anymore. I was like, oh, I don't like you anymore, you know, because even though she was a cool person, she just said something that off was offensive to me. I think that as a teacher, it's important to maybe put your own feelings aside. And as a teacher, it's not your responsibility to necessarily say what you believe about homophobia or, or homosexuality, but it is the teacher's responsibility to teach. And, to make, and the only way that a teacher can teach is if the classroom is a safe place for everybody. So the teacher then has an obligation to make sure that all students feel comfortable in the classroom. I say what teacher, teachers should do is not punish them, but like tell them that gay people aren't bad or any stuff like that, because sometimes kids think gay people are bad and they're not nice and we shouldn't like gay people. And stuff stuff like that. Just be observant and just be receptive to different things that might be going on and definitely if a student comes to you with information like that then definitely like try to um, to follow the next course of action try to get that problem like you know taken care of. To the teachers that like don't speak up when they hear like some homophobic remarks I would want to tell them that every little every little remark that is made sticks with the person like every little thing it's like you're you're like as a gay young person you get shit from everyone and it's like your cup stop starts filling up and filling up and filling up and every little comment you start like keeping it with you you start like putting it in the cup and to the point where like it's just gonna you're just gonna burst and everything like don't let anything pass by because every little remark affects the person a lot every single one. Yeah, the smallest little things count so much, and I think sometimes people forget that. But just 
being involved or even listening. I think key is just listening. What is going on in your classroom? What is going on in your school? What is going on in, I don't know, the environment in general? Just listening is the most important thing. When I was in my senior year, I had a really good um, English media te teacher who uh, incorporated GLBT articles or things that were written out, that written, written by or for or about um, the GLBT community. We would all read it out loud and then we just, we had discussions about, you know, is this right, is this correct, how do you agree, do you disagree and why? I know for a fact that a lot of students benefited from that. A lot of the straight students benefited from that as well, like I think the majority of them did because any stigma that they had about a GLBT person you know, they were able to ask questions. They were able to, like, say, is this true? Or they were able to say, you know, like, I don't agree with this. I don't agree that gay people should marry because yada, 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 yada. It's not like we're out to convert people. We're just out to educate people about, like, what our experiences are to, like, make people more open to different ideas and make people understand what we have to go through in everyday life so that society can change. Because if nobody speaks up, then society never changes. Being gay is not wrong and being yourself is not wrong it's just the way you are and I want to see a school that's really positive and you know like you could just be yourself and not worry about what other people will think about you it's just it's just is that too much too much to ask <laughs>